such a pleasure and honor for me to welcome you to this uh, session, this evening session. The topic is overcoming the obstacles to your leadership effectiveness. Uh, this is part of our monthly self-leadership series. And uh, what I would like to do right now is just to first uh, share my screen so that you, uh, uh, you can follow uh, with what I am uh, presenting to you this evening. So this is part of our monthly leadership series, and we are organizing this under the Institute of Neurosemantics Malaysia. And in this series on Thursday evenings, uh, we have topics on uh, neurosemantics, uh, self-leadership, meta-coaching uh, system, and also parenting. And I would like to welcome each and every one of you, uh, those of you who've been here before, uh, and those of you who are uh, joining us for, this, uh, for the first time. Uh, I'm so pleased and honored that you are here. And I would like to uh, invite you to take part uh, in the session. Uh, if you have any questions or whatsoever, then I'll be very happy to uh, assist in that, uh, in that manner. Now, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Mazuki. I'm a neurosemantics trainer and meta coach, and I represent Malaysia on the uh, international leadership team of the International Society of Neurosemantics. Now, leadership, especially self-leadership, is an area which is very close to my heart and uh, area I'm passionate about. Why? Because when I first started on this journey, I didn't even know that this word called leadership. Uh, I thought it was just managing. And it, it was through many years of trial and error and learning, then I began to recognize it as something uh, that, uh, that needs to be learned and I've been on this journey for over 20 years, and I find it so fascinating that I keep uh, uh, learning it over and over. So there is always something new, especially the topic that we are going to cover this evening. Uh, there is something uh, uh, new that I just learned about a week ago, even though I've been exposed to this topic for over, what, 15 years already. Okay, so uh, that, that's why uh, if I get overexcited, I hope you'll forgive me. Uh, this is an area of passion for me uh, in uh, leadership. Now, in the 60 to sometimes it goes on to 90 minutes together, we'll be discussing on the four themes for leadership effectiveness. Uh, one is empowerment. Two is healing. Three is programming, and the fourth theme is ecology. When we take all these four themes together, then we improve or increase our uh, effectiveness in leading. I will pause for, discuss, for discussion after each main point, and typically I will be presenting about 10, 15 minutes, and I will pause. This is to give you opportunities, abundant opportunities to ask questions, to comment, or to contribute uh, your own experience with respect to the uh, points that we'll be discussing. And I do know that some of you like to think out loud. I also want to welcome those, those people who like to think out loud. By all means, uh, when I pause after the main points, by all means, uh, let us bounce the idea so that we can learn from one another. Another reminder is that my style is to be light and humorous. So if I laugh or smile, I'm never laughing at you, but at our silly human qualities. My purpose is to lighten things up, reduce being serious and be more real. So I hope you're ready to smile and laugh at our silly selves uh, and uh, uh, for me, there are times that I deliberately make myself silly, especially for the sake of the grandchildren. They love it when, when grandfather is uh, silly. <laughs> now, as an introduction to the topic that we, we are discussing this evening, uh, self-control. So this is uh, the area that we are talking about this evening. Self-control is a crucial element 
for your leadership effectiveness. Without self-control, you find it hard to succeed in anything in life. That's why little children from birth, they, learn, they begin to learn how to control their, their, their hands. Their, or they first have to discover that they have hands, <laughs> their legs. They learn to control this because when we are able to control our bodies, the way that our bodies move and work and operate, then we, get, we can get ourselves to uh, reach our goal. So that's why uh, we say that your success depends on your ability to implement your action plan. Now, this is the key thing. We have plans about what we want to achieve and we know the strategies that we need to take in order to achieve those. The thing is that, do you have the ability to implement? Yeah. And one significant reason why uh, people are unable to do what they plan to do is their inability to be in control of their mental and emotional states. Not being fully in charge of yourself creates a host of obstacles in your self-leadership pathway. So how do you overcome this? How do you overcome these mental and emotional states? So that is the, at the core of what we'll be discussing this evening. And Neurosemantics has identified 14 distinct obstacles that we create in our, in our mind. We are the ones who created these obstacles. Now, through the four themes of empowerment, healing, programming, and ecology, you can and will overcome these obstacles to unleash uh, your leadership effectiveness. Now, these four, uh, 14 distinct obstacles in the four themes are addressed in detail in uh, the Neurosemantics flagship program that we call APG. So what uh, we will not be doing this evening is to go into, de into details of uh, how we are going to, uh, the actual patterns of uh, overcoming them. However, I will give you the uh, general strategy of overcoming these obstacles. And I hope that uh, these general strategies will be useful for you this evening. So let's just take a look at these obstacles. Uh, as I mentioned, the the, I would say the overarching obstacle is that we are not fully in charge of ourselves because of uncontrollable mental and emotional states. Now, I'm using those words specifically because from the neurosemantics approach, we have four central powers. Those of you who, uh, who uh, are... Uh, regular to uh, these discussions, like uh, I can see Chet Siu over here. Uh, you've just joined us, and I uh, and um, uh, Guat Ching uh, over here, and also Hashim uh, has just joined us. Those of you who have uh, or are familiar with these sessions, I keep talking about these um, uh, four, uh, four central powers because these are the powers that we are endowed with, and these are the powers that we use in order to take action, in order to achieve what we want. So these are the uh, four central powers of thinking, feeling. These are our internal powers. And also saying, doing. When we are able to package our saying and doing in a strategic fashion, that makes it easier for us to achieve our goal. When I, think, when I say that, I remember how we play football. You know, um, for, for most of, uh, of us, we see people playing football at international level because on TV, they show at the international level. But if you have had the experience of playing football as a kid at the kampong level, <laughs> you can see the vast difference. At the international level, they are playing strategically. At kampong level, all that you want to do is just have a touch on the ball. So everybody goes after the ball. Uh, it, well, everyone's happy because everyone's running, 
but don't bet on getting too many goals. Sometimes you have too much goals. I don't know. But that's the difference between uh, strategic action and uh, random action. So if we want our uh, to achieve our goals, we need to package our saying, doing. These are our action. Strategize them in order to achieve uh, the result that we want. Now, the issue is our saying, doing, our behaviors are influenced directly by our thinking feeling, the, our internal powers. Our thinking feeling is the one that creates our mental and emotional states. And when we do not know how to manage the thinking feeling process, we throw ourselves into all sorts of mental and emotional states to the extent that we cannot execute the plan that we already have. So what are these 14 obstacles, 14 problems that we face? And again, I need to warn you that these problems are self-inflicted problems. And the best part is since they are self-inflicted, we can solve them. There is a solution to it. Okay, so let's take a look at what are these um, 14 obstacles that we create in our mind. One is that we are not completely responsible because we feel disempowered. Responses, four responses. Our thinking, feeling, saying, doing. So one problem is that some people, they feel that they cannot say what they want to say, cannot do what they want to do, don't even have the power to think or feel for themselves. So that's one uh, a problem that people have. Uh, have you ever heard, uh, been told or have, have you ever heard of people when they see uh, somebody crying because, uh, because something uh, that caused them to be unhappy happened and they cry and somebody comes up, Oh, why are you crying? You shouldn't be crying for simple matter like that. So that part of, um, uh, of feeling uh, sad is being denied. And because of that, some people feel they are not empowered to even feel. So that's one. Another one is not accept yourself fully and unconditionally. So this is a problem that I notice in the workplace, in the corporate uh, world, many, many people are facing this. Yeah? Not able to accept themselves fully and unconditionally. Let, uh, let's move on. Another uh, problem are having negative beliefs that hold you back. Another one is too little pleasure in productive activity. Have you ever had that? You know that you need to do something, but I don't want that. Boring. Uh, and there's also another, another problem there. Too much pleasure <laughs> in unproductive activity. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, I, I uh, sometimes struggle with this because uh, in the morning after my morning prayer, uh, I would just uh, sit down and start reading uh, uh, from a magazine, flipboard on my, on my iPhone. Uh, I'll be reading from there. And I love going through the news. However, the moment I notice it's already 6.45 in the morning, I need to get ready to go out for my morning run. However, that pleasure of reading through, <laughs> sometimes it seduces me to not go for my run. So this is, this is also about pleasure. We do things that pleasurize us. The issue is that the activities that are productive for us we don't have much pleasure, therefore we don't do. However, the activities that are not productive, it is too pleasurable, we cannot stop ourselves doing that. So that's another problem that we face. Next one are negative emotions holding you back. You want to uh, take action, but there are negative emotions that are holding you back. Another one is concepts that trigger negative emotion. Uh, uh, and, and people can, can uh, be uh, unintentionally set triggers on, 
on uh, uh, on a variety of things. Uh, it may be uh, because of a previous past event, uh, uh, and in that event, let's say in that event, it involved a red BMW, and they, that person uh, 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 was uncomfortable and sad uh, and angry at that time. Now they they put a, what we call an anchor on a red BMW. And what tends to happen is that every time they see a red BMW, that emotion starts to come back. So these are concepts uh, that trigger negative emotions. And it can be uh, uh, almost anything. Uh, the next one are uh, what we call dragons. Dragons are the thoughts of feelings uh, or an experience that set up conflicting internal states. You have uh, the the state of uh, the state of desire to do the work that you need to do at the same time the state of disgust that you are doing something that uh, you're supposed to do so you 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 have a state that is driving you a mental emotional state that is driving you and also another mental and emotional state that is pulling you away and because of that you set this we call it a dragon state because these states are pulling yourself apart. Okay, uh, another problem, obstacle that we create is that, uh, how many of you can relate to this? Dreaming and not take effective action. <laughs> All sorts of wonderful plan. And the planning itself is so nice, so wonderful, but you are not taking action. Uh, in, uh, uh, in Malaysia, uh, we have a term for it, right? NATO? No action, talk only. <laughs> so that's another one that we create. Next is that stuck. Have you ever had that uh, scenario? You're working on something and then suddenly you are stuck. For writers, they have a term for it. They call it writer's block. Uh, and uh, sometimes you are doing something, make, doing a report or even, even implementing a certain uh, activity, then you are stuck because the, the thoughts in your mind are uh, frozen, so to speak. So that's also an issue, uh, that an obstacle that people face uh, with respect to their effectiveness. Another obstacle is feeling unmotivated and not energized to pursue your goals. You have goals, you know they are, uh, you have decided to do that, but you don't feel that energy, that, that, that drive to do that. Okay, so have you ever had that experience? Uh, another obstacle that we create in our mind is we have this diffuse, distracted and unfocused. Uh, in your task. So you have your task that you need to do, but uh, there's uh, this thing here coming, this thing here coming in uh, at the, uh, uh, in order to interrupt. And because of that, you are not fully engaged in the task that you do and you lose that effectiveness. Another uh, problem is excuses. Oh, this is, this is very interesting, especially for intelligent people. Uh, and I know that many of you are really intelligent people. Do you realize that you intelligent people have really intelligent excuses for not doing things that you're supposed to do? <laughs> so excuses uh, is another obstacle that uh, we create in our mind. Uh, another one is dilemma. We, we are there uh, implementing something that we need to implement However, should I do this or should I do this? So you are in a dilemma. And sometimes the dilemma comes from two things that are equally good, equally useful. So you are stuck in that dilemma. Yep. And uh, the last one here is lacking the full range of congruency, power, and focus for activity. So the activity involves you saying and doing something. That's your action. However, in terms of your mental and emotional states, they are not congruent. Because of that, you lose that power. It's just like driving a car with the handbrake not released. 
yeah, or maybe the car will not align. So this is also uh, uh, a problem that we create obstacles, right? So uh, from the neurosemantics approach, the solution that we bring uh, is uh, four comes in four themes. The first theme is empowerment, and this empowerment is through replication of developmental psychology because uh, to a certain extent some parts of us are not fully developed so empowerment is to recapitulate to replicate the developmental psychology so that we can uh, bring in our full power and in neurosemantics when whenever that we talk about power we are talking about the four central powers of thinking feeling saying and doing so empowerment here is to be able to bring back all of this power so that we are the owner to take ownership of those powers and to use them at will. So that's the first theme. The second theme is the theme of healing. Healing here refers to in our lives as human beings, we make mistakes uh, here and there. So healing is for mistakes relating to emotions, ideas, and states. So to be able to heal those so that we are fully and completely in our uh, mental and emotional positive states. And the third theme is programming. To now, after healing, to now program ourselves to have that single-minded focus. Uh, part of what many people face today uh, uh, when we work in environment when, where we need to multitask, People, when they do not have the skill of single focus, they can get distracted by all the multitasks that they have to the extent that they are not even effective in any one task. So programming here is to program ourselves so that we can, be, we can have that single-minded focus. And that will bring us to become more effective in our leadership. And finally, the theme of ecology. Ecology here, we are referring to the ecology of the system, to have the wisdom, harmony, and congruency, because we need to be able to check with all that is within our ecology to make sure that the goal or objective that we have uh, decided upon uh, meets the criteria that it is uh, fully and completely bringing value, bringing benefit, not only to ourselves, but to our surrounding. That is what we are referring to our ecology. So those are the obstacles that we will be looking into uh, in a short while. We'll be looking into uh, how to uh, overcome, how to solve these obstacles so that our self-leadership will be much more uh, effective. So uh, I'm going to pause uh, here. Uh, and in a short while, and, and afterwards, we are going to take these four uh, themes one by one. Uh, the theme of empowerment, the theme of healing, the theme of programming, the theme of ecology. And we are going to put it, them together that will make our leadership much more effective. So with that, I'm going to pause here in order to invite uh, questions or comments uh, from any one of you. Go ahead, uh, Chek Siu. Uh, we can't hear you, Chek Siu. Now, yes. okay. Just now talk about the uncontrollable emotion and the, the mental state kind of thing. Okay, I want to just, I mean, ask a question here. Like lately that happened in the second link there, the auntie link from Kulai, which they pull out, pull off the, the car, the, 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 the car number plate kind of thing. This is in what kind of state of the of the mind kind of thing. <laughs> he, he tried to stop an alpha, you see, and then you know. Yeah. Okay, so so that's basically what I I, I would uh, I would guess it is anger uh, and uh, frustration. So coming uh, coming in together. Uh, and that drive her behavior, wow, very strong, uh, can stop uh, an alpha. Uh. Yeah, so, so, so this, is, this is where we are talking about uncontrollable mental and emotional state 
so she's experiencing that mental and emotional state. I'm, uh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let me see. What do you think? Is it that talking one? Uh, somehow you have a, a shared screen, a screen, a Gim Kim. Uh, that's from, uh, I'm seeing Gim Kim's uh, screen. Is, is that your screen? Screen or somebody else? So let's screen? just. Is it yours, Chuck's you? No, it's not my screen. <laughs> it's a Gim Kim screen. Okay. Uh, okay. If you can stop share, uh, Gim Kim. Okay, I can do that. Okay. Yeah, I found it. Uh, <laughs> somehow it just got uh, in. Yeah. Uh, that's all right. Yeah. Uh, so this is what we are referring to. Uh, uncontrollable mental and emotional state because mm -hmm. uh, the intensity of our state depends on the uh, meta levels that our thinking goes into. So when it goes into uh, uh, an uncontrolled negative thinking, that builds the intensity of what? I don't know, frustration or anger. And, and uh, State is an energy that is felt in the neurology. Yeah, state is mental, emotional, and in the body. So uh, that uh, energy is so much that it propels her to get out of a car and uh, stop at Alpha uh, on the road. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, that is another uh, example of an uncontrolled mental and emotional state. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Chuck Xiu. Uh, anyone else has got any questions or comments? Are you ready to move on to the next point? Right? So let's move to the next point, which is the uh, theme one. Theme one. Are you seeing the my screen? It's not there. Let me just uh, do that again. Still sharing. Oh. Still sharing. Okay. Screen sharing is pause. Screen sharing. Uh, oh, pause on your side. Oh, no. How come tonight uh, we've got all of these issues coming? <laughs> Uncontrollable. Oh, okay. I yes. think because just now you stopped sharing uh, Kim, uh, the, the, ah. the, 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 the participant on your screen. So uh -huh. I think you need to go back. Then you... 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 Click share again. Mm. Ah, <laughs> wow. Thank you. <laughs> we are back on track. So uh, let's continue on. Uh, theme one, empowerment uh, through replication. Replication here refers to to bring back our powers, yeah? to bring back our powers we, so that we can use them. So the first one is in terms of our uh, personal powers. Now, the problem that we face with respect to our personal powers is that when a person does not completely, uh, not completely response able because they feel disempowered, uh, what we are referring to, the four central powers, some, uh, there are people, and many people in fact, feel that they are not totally in full control or ownership 
of the thinking, of the feeling, of the saying, of their doing. So this can be caused by various factors uh, during their uh, development uh, process. So what we do uh, in neurosemantics is that in when we have with uh, when a person or we face an issue of not feeling fully uh, empowered with respect to our with respect to our four central powers. So how we overcome is that we focus on uh, that you uh, be able to reclaim your powers as capacities and potential. This is what we, we term as to take back the ownership. Yeah, it could be something that as a child, uh, uh, you've been scolded so many times, uh, stop thinking, just do what I tell you to do. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you have you ever <laughs> gone through that? <laughs> when you are small, yes, your lot. parents scold you for, for being so creative, just do what I tell you to do. Don't think. <laughs> Yeah, just be cooperative, don't be creative. Ah, don't be creative. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah, I, uh, I always say I eat salt more than you eat rice. Okay, just listen to me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck <Jack> Xu. <laughs> so uh, that's how people be, feel disempowered. They feel as if they are not in full control. So what we uh, focus on, the solution is to uh, recapitulate the development of self-trust uh, in order uh, for you to develop that self-esteem, self-confidence, and self-efficacy. So the solution is to be able to come back to your core, to understand uh, yourself, to have full, full and unconditional self-esteem, and to be able to have uh, self-confidence based upon your competencies, and then to develop your own self-efficacy uh, in the context that you have the ability, you have the competency to learn new things because you have the skill of learning. So that's the solution to it. And what it does is that it creates this foundation. The foundation is to live inside out. Our, our living is inside out from our thinking feeling to our saying doing to reverse the outside-in orientation. And many people, they, they are oriented to what's outside that determines what they can do. So instead of outside-in, we go inside-out. To develop critical thinking in our mind, to have emotional intelligence, to be proactive and productive. So that's the foundation that is created when we, uh, when we own back our powers okay so without these powers uh, a person will feel uh, will not feel uh, completely responsible because they feel disempowered so that overcomes the first problem so looking at the uh, power zone right now this the second one in the context of empowerment is about self the problem that uh, people face is not accept themselves fully and unconditionally. So uh, that's the problem that people face. So the focus uh, in this context, in the, in the context of self, is for you to fully accept yourself as a human being. That, and that is the only criteria that you judge yourself. Because uh, the solution that we bring is to be able to distinguish, to have that distinction between you as a human being and you as a human doing. Human being is uh, unconditional. Human doing is conditional to your skill, to not have that uh, confusion between being and doing. So that's the solution to uh, to. Uh, in order to overcome this issue of not accepting self uh, fully and unconditionally. And by doing this, you are building the foundation of the healthy love of self. Healthy in the sense that you are accepting yourself uh, as a human being fully and unconditionally and knowing that your, power, uh, your competencies, uh, your confidence is based upon your skills to 
be confident in the things that you're skilled about and to healthily not be confident in the things that you are not uh, competent about. Yeah. So uh, healthy love of self uh, is in the opposite of uh, operating with a map of self inadequate, that you become a problem to yourself. So some people have those uh, issues. So this is the uh, second uh, obstacle, not accept uh, yourself fully and unconditionally. So the solution is to uh, be able to accept yourself as a human being and to contrast it with human doing. The third one is about beliefs. The problem that people face in this area is negative beliefs holding you back or even have weak positive beliefs. You believe that you can succeed, can or not? <laughs> so the positive belief is not strong enough. So how do we overcome that? First is in the area, what we are focusing on is on you as the meaning maker. So whatever belief that you have comes from your uh, capacity as the meaning maker. So you are the one who's creating the meaning. So the solution is to bring or invite or accept only empowering thoughts and beliefs and to be able to throw out the beliefs that are disempowering. So when we do that, the, the foundation that is created is that you're able to create, uh, to create your meta place, your metaverse, to be able to access your neurosemantic power to construct and deconstruct reality so it serves you well. Yeah? So creating your own metaverse that is empowering for you because you are the one who's doing the creation. And to be able to check with reality that the metaverse that you are creating is something that will bring you forward uh, in, uh, uh, in achieving your goals. Yeah? So the fourth one relating to empowerment <clears throat> is in the context of pleasure. Yeah, I mentioned uh, just now, problem is uh, sometimes too little pleasure in productive activity and or too much pleasure in unproductivity uh, in unproductive uh, activity uh, and guess what i've been uh, 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 i've been guilty of both <laughs> in so many different uh, situation so how do we overcome that is to focus on the fact that you are the valuer valuer refers to you are the one who's putting value on the uh, activity so uh, what we do uh, as a solution is the pleasure and meta pleasure. So since I'm the one who's putting value on the activity, so if this activity is productive and I don't feel so much pleasure, all that I need to do is to uh, layer more value on that particular activity. And because I've layered so much value on that activity and then it becomes pleasurable for me. And the reason why I find it so pleasurable to do things that are unproductive is because I have put so much value on that activity. Since I'm the meaning maker and the valuer, all that I need to do is just to take off all of those uh, uh, values and just come to the activity as an activity. In that way, I do not uh, fall into the trap of doing the things that I'm not supposed to do over and over again. And uh, I will be able to uh, feel that pleasure and joy in doing the things that are productive for me. So what this does as a foundation is that it creates motivation, energy, vitality, uh, and establishing a value hierarchy. Yeah, and uh, uh, Michael, uh, Dr. Michael Hall, uh, uh, he typically gives the example every time uh, because uh, he works uh, at home. There are times that he'll deliberately go to the nearest Starbucks and work from there uh, for change of uh, scenery. And when he's at Starbucks, uh, uh, sometimes people drop in and they have a chit chat. And 
uh, he, he'll have people asking, uh, so what's that you're doing? Uh, and and uh, he says, uh, I'm uh, writing, uh, writing a, a book. And uh, sometimes the people don't know, why do you have uh, to work so hard? In his, his, his mind, am I working so hard? I'm enjoying doing this. Uh, what do you mean by I'm working so hard? <laughs> so when you're enjoying something, you are not really working, are you? So these are the four obstacles and how we overcome them uh, through uh, neurosemantics. Uh, the first obstacle we talked earlier is not being completely responsible because we feel disempowered. So that comes into bringing and uh, rebuilding self-trust. Uh, the second one is not uh, uh, accepting uh, ourselves fully and unconditionally. So the solution is to have that separation between being and doing to accept ourselves fully as human being. Uh, the third one is about beliefs, uh, negative beliefs holding us back. This is to take back our power of meaning making to be able to uh, destroy all the negative uh, beliefs and only invite empowering beliefs in our lives. And the fourth point, uh, the fourth one that we mentioned just now is about pleasuring and de-pleasuring. We have too little pleasure in the activities that we, uh, uh, in productive activity. So all that we need to do is to put more value into that activity, then it becomes pleasurable to, uh, to us. If we have too much pleasure on unproductive activity, then we unload all of those uh, values from that particular activity, then that activity just becomes is, just one of the activities without all of the associated values. So that's how we uh, pleasure, pleasurize and de-pleasurize ourselves. And uh, by uh, doing all of these four steps, uh, in this theme, that gives us that greater empowerment uh, in our life. So I'm going to stop uh, 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 here uh, in order to give uh, every one of you an opportunity to ask questions uh, or comments. So go ahead. You are good with that? Okay, right. So that's the first theme to empowerment. It's about recapitulating. It's about redeveloping our powers. So now moving to the second theme. Right, uh, hold on. Let me just check. I noticed uh, Gua Ching uh, put on the chat the subordinates are expecting the leader to lead them knowing everything problem solvers the subordinates started not to respect the leader when they think the leader is lack of competency we all know that we are human imperfect how do we handle this uh, situation uh, very good uh, 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 point here uh, and uh, interesting that uh, Gua Ching, you put uh, in this point because uh, this point also relates to how things are, uh, how things are uh, developing in the corporate world. Because uh, yes, um, uh, the, the, the situation whereby the leader is not fully competent in the area of work that they do. And these things happen because uh, many people are, uh, I would use the term, they are promoted to the positions of incompetency. Yeah? For example, let's take in the example of uh, sales. Uh, sales require a set of skills. So a person is very good at, uh, in sales. And because he's very good in sales for several, uh, uh, for several quarters or several years, that person is... Uh, the number one salesperson in the company. So when the sales manager's uh, position becomes vacant, who gets to be promoted to become the sales manager? Yeah, that number one salesperson. However, sales manager position requires an additional set of skill, not just selling. It requires the skill of managing. 
And now this top salesperson becomes a manager and incompetent in managing. So this is where uh, the, uh, the issues when we talk about leadership is part of leadership is having that, that ability to learn. So uh, having the skill of self-awareness to be aware that, okay, uh, previously the skills that are required of, uh, of me is selling. Now what is required of me is managing. So I need to learn how to manage. And part of, um, uh, part of leadership requires that I be, uh, I be transparent and congruent to be able to accept the fact that I am incompetent in managing as opposed to selling. Now, the issue over here is that, so uh, remember I mentioned to you the uh, issue of development of self um, uh, um, being and doing. So when a person does not know the distinction between being and doing, noticing that they are incompetent in a particular area, they make the conclusion that I am not good enough. Oh, so that's where uh, a lot of issues come in. A person who have a strong foundation in being and doing, realize that, okay, I am not good in managing because I don't have competency in managing. It doesn't mean that I am less of a person. So all that I need to do is to learn how to manage, not just sell. So when that particular leader has got a good boundary between self and others, that, uh, sorry, self, uh, being and doing, that leader is able to say to the subordinate, uh, subordinates, Okay, so in the area of managing, what am I not yet doing right so that I can improve myself? Yeah. A leader who does not have that boundary between being and doing becomes ashamed that they are not uh, good enough in this particular skill because they think that be, uh, since they are not good in that skill, it means that they are not good enough and they fake it. So this is, this is the issue that we have in a lot of organizations. Uh, we call them imposter syndrome. Uh, sometimes uh, managers, uh, they are, they are uh, promoted and they feel that they are an imposter. They should not have been promoted because they are not good enough. And, and because they, don't, they are not able to separate between being and doing, that feeling of not good enough is the feeling that prevents them from learning the new skill to be good in what they do. And that puts them into the downward uh, spiral. Yeah? Good. So, Mana, uh, go ahead if you like to comment. I noticed that you put there. So Thank welcome, you, Mana. Thank you so much. Actually, I'm not going to say anything different other than what he said. All I just wanted to say one word that when, whenever we do not have a problem with us being incompetent, then we don't have problem with others feeling that we are incompetent. So once we start the acceptance for self, then we wouldn't be ashamed to show our vulnerability. So if I reframe the question, mm. it would be the problem is not in the people who does mm. not see, who thinks that the person is incompetent. The problem is in the person himself because he is expecting from himself to know everything. And because he doesn't know everything, he feels ashamed. So he needs to lower his expectation of self. You don't know everything and you need to be accepting and okay with that fact. And actually, showing people that it's okay not to know, it makes them also feeling okay about themselves. Mm. If when they don't know, they come and say, we don't know. So actually it, it brings more um, um, better uh, of uh, the people, the, um, the performance of the team that, okay, we can be ourselves and it's okay and we can share our vulnerability and we can support each other. So that's all what I wanted to say. Thank you, Mana. It's a very... Uh, important perspective uh, also to bring uh, that uh, uh, and this relates to what we call the leadership mindset yeah part of the leadership mindset that we need to uh, uh, to be able to embrace today 
is that as leaders, we don't know everything and we are uh, not competent in uh, a lot of things. Yeah, uh, we are not Google search engine, uh, watching put there or Wikipedia that know everything. Uh, however, be very careful. Even Wikipedia doesn't know everything. Uh, I was just reading an article about uh, this lady for several years. Uh, she's uh, uh, in China. It is the the the, the China Wikipedia ver version of our Wikipedia. She was changing Russian history. <laughs> After something like close to 10 years, she, she was doing that until another researcher uh, discovered that <laughs> discovered that what she was posting in Wikipedia it was not through history. She created new places, new territories uh, because she was bored and she was good at it. So be careful, even Wikipedia will get it wrong. And as, uh, as leaders, we want to be able to accept the fact that we are more... We are incompetent in more things that we are competent in. Yeah. So just think about that for a moment. I may be competent in, uh, I, I'm a patrol head. I may be competent in driving a car. However, I'm not competent in driving a super bike. I'm not competent in driving a, 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 a what do you call a lorry or bus or a, a, or what do you call a, a trailer. So to be able to accept that as a leader, know what I'm competent in. And uh, I remember, uh, especially when I was, un, uh, I was uh, learning from uh, Robert Kiyosaki, he, he's got this very clear, uh, he said to us uh, that, uh, if you want to model me in the area of uh, business, especially building business, go ahead, you can model me because that's my area of strength. If you want to model me in the area of investing, so this was in the, uh, uh, I would say in the early 90s. Yeah? So if you want to model me in the area of investing, I, I must warn you that I am just starting uh, to go into uh, uh, investing. So I'm a, I'm a novice in this area. So notice he's, he's noticing his, competency and incompetency. And then the next thing uh, struck me, uh, however, don't ever model me in the area of family because Kim and, and I, we decided not to get married. Uh, sorry, not to have children. So he knows where he's competent in, where he's not competent in. So as leaders, uh, to have that uh, honesty to self, to realize, what am I competent in and what am I not competent in? And to be transparent in that, in that way we can uh, grow together. Yeah. So thank you, uh, Manal, for sharing that. Let's move to our next uh, point, which is healing the mistakes. Ah, good. Healing the mistakes. Now, when we talk about mistakes, this refers to emotions, concepts, and dragon states that are happening. So in the context of emotions, the problem that we face is negative emotions holding us back. Or there are taboos which restrict your sense of aliveness and imprison. Yeah? So when I say taboo, I remember when I was bringing... Uh, uh, I and my wife will bring our eldest uh, granddaughter at that time to a shopping mall. And uh, those of you who uh, are not familiar, uh, our eldest granddaughter, her name is Azara. However, grandfather calls her grasshopper. So she was behaving like a grasshopper in the shopping mall. So she was jumping around, running around a little bit, not bothering anyone. However, uh, as she was doing that, another lady passed by and said to her, uh, little girls shouldn't be jumping uh, around like that. So notice, that's a taboo, that little girls should not be doing that. So we don't know that lady enough, so we do not say anything to the lady. However, we pull grasshopper aside and, say, uh, and uh, uh, we say to her, grasshopper, 
uh, whether you're a girl or a boy, uh, as, a, uh, uh, as a child, you can do whatever that you were doing just now because you, you were not uh, troubling anybody. You were just moving about actively and that's okay. So to not restrict, uh, to not let her be in that uh, position where she may taboo herself from doing things. So this uh, relates to negative emotions holding uh, people back. So the focus here to overcome it is to heal those prohibitions. So what do we do? To identify permissions that freeze and liberate. So like what we did with Grasshopper, to give her permission that she can walk, she can run, she can jump, uh, depending on the context. Uh, and I, I noticed that uh, with many of uh, children nowadays, they know that. They know that uh, when they are outside uh, there, they can run, they can shout. However, when they go inside, like uh, my, uh, my daughter taught her children, uh, she taught her children, there are two voices that you use. One is the indoor voice and the other is the outdoor voice. So in outdoor voice can be louder, indoor voice can be uh, not so loud. So giving that permission uh, that uh, liberates them. So what happens is that this creates a foundation of vitality, emotional intelligence, aliveness, uh, and your energy uh, system is well in place. Uh, because now you are not blocking those emotions, you are liberating them. There are uh, there are places that you can allow your uh, emotions to, uh, to feel fully and congruently whatever emotions that you, uh, uh, that you experience. Okay, so that's uh, one. So another healing, uh, the mistakes is about concepts. The problems that uh, uh, people face is that there are concepts that trigger negative emotions or uh, in, pre, uh, in prison. Yeah. So the focus uh, over here is to heal misunderstandings. We have misunderstanding of things. So, uh, and things can be, uh, I give the silly example of a car, a certain, col a, a certain color of car, uh, a person can link uh, an unresourceful emotion uh, to that. It, it comes from a misunderstanding. We call it complex equivalences. You are equating an object with a certain uh, emotion. So the solution is to liberate this concept, to be able to open up those concepts, to see the concepts in its, in its entirety and not to link to certain triggers. So what happened is that we are uh, the foundation that we are creating is the structure of the meta place, the metaverse, whatever is inside our uh, internal maps, we are creating a structure that is robust. That is not, uh, that is not uh, created out of misunderstanding, but created out of full understanding of what's happening in the real world. So that's uh, how we overcome that obstacle yeah, to be able to uh, remove those triggers, remove those buttons. Uh, otherwise, certain things will uh, trigger us into unresourceful emotions. Yeah? The concepts trigger us into unresourceful emotions. Yeah? Next one is uh, regarding dragons. Dragons here, we are referring to the problem uh, of a thought or a feeling or an experience that set up Conflicting or toxic states. Yeah, conflicting or toxic states. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 I, uh, I uh, remember uh, at, at one time, uh, I had, um, uh, in, in, our, in, in our organization, we took, uh, uh, we took an intern and somehow, uh, we, we were running this pattern, uh, this pattern on, on dragon. And what we, uh, what we discovered was this intern had this concept that bosses, so at that time I was the boss, bosses are monsters. And, be <laughs> and because of that, <laughs> every time that she's in the office, she is fearful of me. 
So whenever that I need to do anything, I'll have to uh, I'll have to channel that communication through my wife or through my daughter to able to be able to uh, communicate with with her. So so that concept that bosses are monsters uh, prevented her from being fully herself uh, to be working in the organization. So luckily, we discovered that quite an early stage of the of her internship and uh, after that uh, after that was a result then she was able to uh, operate fully uh, <laughs> in the organization <laughs> yeah yeah watching i don't know what she was afraid of <laughs> maybe she hear too many stories of uh, of bosses being the the what it called tiger boss or lion boss or whatsoever so these are what we call um, uh, toxic states uh, that was created. So it, 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 it comes from the misuse of reflexivity. Yeah? So our self-reflexivity, the way that we are creating the meta levels in our mind, uh, we are turning those energies against ourselves. So to overcome that, the focus is to heal the states and, and that are turned against uh, oneself. And the solution to it is to readjust the energy by taming or eliminating. So if it is an, um, an emotion, so we want to tame that emotion to bring the intensity down. Uh, if it is a concept to, uh, to vanquish or delete that concept altogether. So in the, in the case of the concept of bosses are uh, uh, monsters, so to be able to delete that concept altogether. So the foundation that we will achieve when we uh, do this is that the person will experience internal peace and harmony because previously they have that two states inside of them uh, fighting. So uh, the, the person's own internal states are uh, fighting uh, each other and that is feeding the intensity. So the moment you tame those states or, uh, uh, or uh, eliminate those states, then that person experiences internal peace and harmony. So that is also one uh, obstacle that you as a leader can uh, get rid of uh, uh, and that will increase your effectiveness uh, tremendously. So uh, in healing, we talk about uh, emotions, concepts and Dragon. So let me just pause here to invite any uh, questions or comments from uh, any one of you. So go ahead uh, if you have any questions or comments. Marzuki, can I ask you a question? Yes, please. Um, how can you tell that uh, someone um, has a dragon? Yeah, how can a person say, this is a dragon, this is a conflict in stage? Hmm. How can a person tell? Yeah, uh, so uh, what we do is that uh, in, the, uh, in the APG manual uh, and every of the patterns that we have, there are the, uh, there are the uh, we call the elicitation questions. So the elicitation questions, when we uh, pose them to uh, uh, people uh, by answering in the affirmative, then they give us and they give to us the indication whether this person is uh, facing that issue. So if I'm not mistaken, the, uh, uh, one of the elicitation questions in, uh, uh, in uh, eliminating uh, dragon states is the question of, uh, do you have uh, uh, in, in, in inside of you uh, states that uh, frighten you or, uh, not the word frighten, uh, states that are, uh, uh, do, uh, do you experience uh, uh, in yourself states that are at odds with yourself, that you put yourself at odds with yourself, you are fighting uh, with yourself inside. I think it's one of those uh, uh, elicitation questions. So asking this question allow us to uh, identify that. Is that helpful, Manal? Yes, thank you, Marzuki. Uh, actually, you, but you already answered. I was wondering, okay, how can we tell the difference between if it's emotional uh, or it's a dragon? Uh, mm. So the um, I think the key here it's about turning against ourselves. Yeah, um, that's in the problem. Okay, yeah. thank you so much, Marzuki. Thank you. Yeah.
<laughs> uh, and Hashim uh, put in there, uh, living a congruent life, life is a dilemma. Uh, yes, it, it is a dilemma uh, in certain extent. Uh, what we want to do is to have our life congruent with our uh, values, with uh, uh, to to be congruent in terms of our thinking, feeling, to be congruent with our saying, doing. Because when our thinking, feeling is not congruent with our saying, doing, that's when we are uh, uh, we are setting up. Uh, I would say. Uh, the word is incongruency. They are fighting against uh, one another. When you say when you say something, and yet your thinking feeling is not supporting what you are saying, that creates uh, internal incongruency. So that's that's my take on it. Uh, of course, uh, life is a dilemma because there are so many wonderful things that you need to choose in life, isn't it? <laughs> I share. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> <laughs> right, so let's move to the third theme, which is programming a single-minded focus. So now we are getting into uh, to, to ourselves to have that single-minded focus. Yeah, because the key thing is this. We live in a world whereby we have many roles to play. We have many tasks to perform. What kills our effectiveness is when we don't have that single-minded focus. It doesn't mean that we cannot uh, be uh, successful in multitasking. The key to being successful in multitasking is to be a uh, single focus as we are multitasking. Now, Elon Musk uh, is a very uh, controversial figure. You, uh, uh, he, he, he exists in people's minds uh, on two uh, uh, extremes. Uh, people adore him and people hate him. He, uh, he is that controversial. However, one very good example about uh, Elon Musk's uh, success is that he, he has this ability to be fully focused on the task that he uh, is doing. Uh, currently, he's backtracking about his Twitter deal. However, when he, uh, on um, just the day after he put in his bid for Twitter, he was working with SpaceX. So that day was reserved for SpaceX. Imagine the day after he put his bid uh, for Twitter, when he was at working with SpaceX, not one word about Twitter did he say on that day. Yeah, this goes on to show his single-minded uh, focus, even though his bid for Twitter is huge, a few billion dollars worth, yet because he's uh, focused enough uh, with SpaceX, so he was there fully and completely. So this is an example of how uh, what single-minded focus uh, will bring uh, to you. So uh, the first one is with respect to the problem of dreaming and not taking action. So how many of you are guilty uh, of that? Oh, yes, I've been guilty of that many, many times and still guilty of that until today <laughs> on some things. Uh, now, the, pro the solution here is to program the principles, the great principles in our mind to program it into our neurology. So instead of it being high up in the area of concepts, to bring it into the body. So the solution here is to take that great idea of principle and using linguistics to program it into the body. So the foundation that it creates is that uh, what you do is that now that idea of principle uh, in order to make it automatic so that your body automatically will uh, perform that idea. Instead of that idea remaining up there, now you are programming your body to automatically perform that idea. So in this way, you, be, you become an architect of your uh, 
uh, meta verse, your meta place, as you choose the principles to live by. So now these principles become your way of uh, your way of operating in this world, and not just remaining in the as concepts. Now they are being transmitted into your saying and doing because you have programmed it, taking it from mind to muscle. We call it mind to muscle. Next problem is when you get stuck. Yeah? And I believe many of us have uh, gone through that situation, uh, getting stuck. Now, how to overcome that? Our focus is uh, programming your creative imagination. Each and every one of us has the ability uh, to imagine creatively. So uh, the solution here is to bypass the reality limitations. You see, we create the limitations of reality in our mind. So these so-called reality limitations uh, that have constrained you and what we do is that to imagine the possibilities using the metaphor of a miracle. What if I've got this solved? What would that uh, do to me? Yeah? So what we are doing here is that creating a foundation to step beyond a problem and start with a desirable imagined future to program creative imagination and use the as if frame. Why creative imagination is uh, important over here? Because when we confine ourselves to that uh, limitation of reality, we are not able to see the solutions out there. So by imagining that we have already overcome that, uh, 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 that uh, problem, that stuck state, so meaning to say we've overcome that problem, then it releases our imagi uh, uh, creative imagination to look for solutions. Okay, So the solutions are already in, uh, within us. It is already there. It's just that we were not able to tap into the solutions because of the perceived limitation that we have created. Yeah? So this is the uh, another uh, way of uh, overcoming this obstacle of being stuck. The next one is the problem of being unmotivated and not energized to pursue your goals. You have so many wonderful goals, the things that you want to do, yet when you it comes to the time for you to do it, you just don't have the energy, you don't have the uh, the passion or the, the drive in order to do those. So uh, the solution focus is to program a robust intention. So this involves going into your intention and bringing your intention of doing that to your attention. So what the behavior, the doingness that you need to do there, when it is separated from the intention, there is not much energy to do that behavior. So to be able to build up the uh, intention and linking the highest intention to the behavior, that gives you that energy. So this is the structure of motivation. When you link the behavior with your intention, that's how you build that motivation, the energy of motive in order to uh, perform. So what you do is that you create this foundation. The foundation is to program intentions as your ultimate motivation. Uh, and, and this is very interesting. So what motivates you is your intention, not the so-called the outcome, but the intention that's driving it, to establish your purpose and direction, to create a laser beam focus top-down. So you are um, metastating the behavior with your intention. Yeah. So this is another uh, obstacle that you overcome, the obstacle of unmotivated and not energized. You overcome that with a high-level 
intention being metastated on the behavior. Okay, then uh, the fourth one with respect to programming the single minded focus is in APG, we call it the uh, genius state. The problem that people face is diffuse, distracted, and unfocused uh, in your task. Yeah. So you are sitting there, you are supposed to do A, then B comes, C comes uh, around, and you are not uh, focused, you get diffused, and none of the work gets done because you are too distracted. <clears throat> So how to overcome it is to the focus of this particular um, uh, solution is to program the executive decisions uh, in your behavior. So the solution is to use state dependency to your benefit so you can intensely focus on personally meaningful engagement. What it means is that to be able to this, uh, to to uh, I'll use the word design, to be able to design states, mental and emotional states, that is most useful for a particular task that you need to do. So, for example, what's my uh, genius state for playing with my grandchildren? Yeah, because uh, prior to this, I, I was not bothered with it. Then when I realized that my grandchildren are important to me, I start to think about, okay, what are the genius states that are uh, useful for me to be with my grandchildren? Uh, it's about uh, attention. It's about being present fully and completely. Uh, it's about being open and receptive. Uh, it's about uh, being uh, vulnerable. So when I bring all of those states together and create that as an anchor, now that, uh, so this is what we call state dependency, no, noticing that playing with my grandchildren depends on these cocktail of uh, states. I bring all of this cocktail of states into, a, uh, uh, into an anchor so that whenever I'm with my grandchildren, I bring all of these states so that I can be fully and completely with them without any distraction. So this is what we are referring to the solution to use state dependency to your benefit. Certain things require certain states. So when you identify this activity that you need to do, bring in all of the states that are useful for this activity, and then you uh, create that, uh, uh, that crucible that you can anchor uh, uh, that activity to these states. So what you're doing is that you're creating a foundation over here to program executive decisions for your expertise state. So what's your expertise state? Coaching, training, uh, consulting, uh, in my case, uh, uh, grandparenting, so that you turn the flow state on and off at will. Yeah, so I can be there, uh, and my grandchildren, maybe they are playing uh, up, uh, upstairs, and I'm at my table uh, quickly doing some work. And the moment I notice my grandchildren coming around to just shut off my computer and to be fully and completely with my grandchildren to go into that uh, flow state. Okay, So these are uh, four uh, obstacles that we overcome using uh, uh, metastating, the obstacle of uh, dreaming and not taking effective action. So the solution is to take that idea or principle and to program it into the neurology. The problem of getting stuck, the solution is to bypass our reality limitation and to be operating from the as if frame that things has already been Resolve, and uh, 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 and uh, the other problem of uh, being unmotivated and not energized to pursue goals. So the solution is to bring your intention to the attention that you are giving uh, uh, to that particular task. And the last one we mentioned just now uh, is the problem of being diffuse and distracted uh, and unfocused in your task. So. The solution is to bring in the resource states 
for performing the task uh, and to create that crucible so that you can be in that resource state when you are doing that task and you can turn it on and off at will. So those are the uh, four uh, problems that we can solve uh, in order to program that single-minded uh, focus. Okay? So, let me... Uh, uh, let me invite uh, questions or comments from uh, any one of you. Go ahead. I'm reading the, uh, the chat uh, from Hashim. Single-minded focus is an attribute of a resourceful person. On the extreme end is the attention deficit bloke who easily lost focus and got distracted. Can a person labeled with ADHD be a more resourceful state using knowledge and practices of neurosemantics? Mm, I would say yes. Uh, notice the way that I say yes. <laughs> it is not uh, 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 for everyone uh, because a person with ADHD, uh, we are talking... Uh, we, are, we are talking about that is a spectrum. So that's why they call it the, uh, the uh, uh, when people refer to autism, ADHD, now they say about spectrum. Uh, so on one end of the spectrum is very high uh, degree of ADHD. The other end is much lower. So wherever along that continuum a person is, uh, I would say that, yes, they can benefit from this single-minded uh, focus. The thing about, uh, especially people with autism, is that they have lost their uh, natural, uh, natural filter. Uh, every information comes to their attention. So a, a person who's operating at the higher end uh, of the spectrum is that they cannot filter out uh, information that are not that, uh, that are not uh, relevant uh, for them. All of the information is demanding their attention. For example, uh, right now I'm uh, focused on my laptop screen, uh, uh, my camera in front here, and also uh, uh, I've got on my uh, right side over here my iPad. I'm focused uh, on that. I'm not even aware. Uh, uh, of the monitor speakers that I have in front of me, of the uh, pictures. So aut automatically, my mind is already filtering out. Now, with respect to uh, autism, ADHD, sometimes they, uh, they cannot, uh, they cannot uh, filter out. Every of that piece of information is demanding their uh, attention. So that's why they cannot focus on the particular piece of uh, information that they need to focus on because so, so much uh, impulses are coming in. So that is uh, already in their neurology. So whatever is in the neurology takes a higher degree in order to overcome. So for people who are on the uh, lower uh, spectrum of autism or ADHD, yes, they can uh, benefit uh, from this uh, very well. Yeah. So, for example, I have a, a cousin whose son is uh, autistic. Uh, one of the uh, one of the things that distract him is audio, audio distraction. So, what in his case, what he needs to have, he needs to have a, a headset to take all of that uh, distraction. So that is a physical. So he needs a physical filter in order to do that. So uh, when I say yes, uh, uh, what do you call? Uh, uh, the, uh, the patterns that we are bringing in can help a person to have that single-minded focus at the same time, uh, where on that scale of 
uh, not scale, they call it spectrum. Where on the spectrum is uh, uh, are they operating from? However, um, what what uh, 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 Manal is uh, uh, send, uh, communicating uh, with me right now is that uh, the intentionality uh, pattern is something that can be uh, can be trained uh, to that person in order for that person to have that uh, intention of doing something. The thing about uh, ADHD uh, and uh, uh, autism is to identify what's their, I use this word with my uh, cousin, what's their uh, specialty? Because they have a certain specialty that when, uh, 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 that they can fully focus to the extent that the world will uh, uh, will disappear, yeah. And they are able to use that specialty because they have a very strong intention in doing that, uh, because th because that's where their strength is. Yeah? Just like um, uh, this autistic uh, artist uh, flew over New York. Uh, just a short flight over New York when he came uh, back, he's able to do detailed drawing uh, of uh, New York, uh, which uh, I would say, uh, uh, as they say, much better than Google Street uh, could do. So that's his uh, specialty. So so he has that, that uh, laser beam focus in picking up all of the details just through a helicopter ride. Yeah, so uh, the only caveat that I'm saying is that on which end of the spectrum? Yeah, on which end of the spectrum? Yeah, okay. Uh, Manal, uh, is there anything that you would like to add to that? No, thank you, Majuki. Thank you. So let's move to the uh, last uh, point over here, the last uh, theme, which is the theme of ecology. Ecology in living your expertise. So ecology over here, uh, there are four uh, problems that a person faces and we bring in ecology in order to overcome those uh, problems. So one problem is excuses. Excuses, there are, excuses are illegitimate reasons, reasons that shouldn't be there. So that's why we call them excuses. Uh, and you use those excuses to not do what you're supposed to do. And because of that, you are selling yourself uh, and your potentials uh, short. So how to overcome it? What we do is that to focus on, get to be able to wisely distinguish between true reasons for holding back and false reasons or excuses. So this is about wisdom, to distinguish reasons from excuses, making wise decisions in service of your expertise. You want to do something and there is that doubt, to be able to recognize, is this an excuse or is there a legitimate reason? If there is a legitimate reason, to be able to handle that legitimate reason and then be able to continue uh, doing what you need to do. If it is an excuse, then you'll be able to just uh, blow it out of the water, so to speak. Yeah? So this is what uh, this pattern does. And what it does, it sets the foundation of the ecology of a smart or wise goals. Otherwise, sometimes we have, a, uh, if we don't have this uh, ability to distinguish between excuses and reasons, uh, we can be silly enough to set out a goal which is not ecological to us and make hurt or harm ourselves. So it is not about uh, just, uh, just pushing through whatever is in your way to be able to take whatever that pops up and uh, to quality control that. Is this an excuse or uh, a reason? If it is a reason, to find what's behind it and to cater for that if it is just an excuse to be able to just brush uh, that off, okay? So that's uh, one problem that we can uh, we need to overcome to be more effective as a leader. The next one is the problem of 
in a conflict. Two differing objectives or intentions that get in each other's way. <laughs> An example that most people uh, come uh, that I come across uh, 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 frequently is that uh, people say that I want to be rich, but rich people are selfish, and I don't want to be selfish. So now they are uh, struggling over that. Or uh, I want to. Uh, uh, I have two job offers. Uh, this job offer is giving me uh, this benefit, all of this benefit. Another job offer uh, is giving me these benefits. And both of these benefits are really equally good. And I'm in a dilemma which one to uh, take. So typically, this, this problem is about uh, you, uh, two, you, are, uh, uh, you, are, you need to make a choice between two equally attractive things, two equally useful things. So how do you uh, do that? So uh, uh, to overcome that uh, in this particular pattern, we call it the spinning icons pattern. Uh, the focus is to bring about inner harmony. So the solution is to sequence the two states for harmony, to, to be able to bring this state, I want this and I want this, to bring them into harmony. And what uh, you achieve from that is to create that foundation of creativity and playfulness in the sense that using creativity and playfulness, you're able to uh, not see them as competing, to be able to see that they are both serving, uh, 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 serving your uh, well-being and from there to allow uh, a third alternative to come out. And th this is something that Stephen Covey also mentioned, is about finding the third alternative. Instead, either or uh, using the spring icons also could bring you to a third alternative. It can happen that way. And uh, the next one is when you have the problem uh, of lacking the full range of congruency, power, and focus for activity. When we talk about congruency, uh, uh, the full range, we are talking about congruency of our thinking, feeling with our saying, doing when it comes to a certain activity that we need to do. Okay. So the focus in this uh, solution is the alignment pattern. It enables you to straighten out incongruency in order to create congruency. The incongruency uh, with a certain behavior is that you have not noticed certain beliefs or values that are inside your metaverse that is in conflict with the behavior that you uh, are about to embark. So what you do is that the solution is to enhance, enrich, and empower uh, the skill so, so fully align into your meta place. So whatever it is this that you need to do to align it with your uh, understandings, beliefs, and values, in that way, you will have full congruency whenever, when you want to perform that task. By doing that, you're creating the foundation uh, that aligns all of your metaverse to the expression of that particular behavior. So now that behavior doesn't have any conflicting thoughts or conflicting beliefs inside of you, okay? And so that brings us to the 14 uh, obstacles that as leaders, if you face them, that they create uh, inefficiency and lack of uh, effectiveness in our uh, activities because all of these inner games if we don't handle them, then they constrain us, they restrict us from taking action and therefore we lose our uh, effectiveness in that way. So to summarize the, uh, uh, what we have covered uh, for this evening is that we become not fully in charge of ourselves because of our uncontrollable mental and emotional states. Uh, these are 14 uh, different, uh, different uh, obstacles that we may face. So what we do uh, through neurosemantics is to be able to uh, approach all of these things from uh, the first 
uh, theme is empowerment. The second theme is uh, healing. Uh, and third theme is programming for single-minded focus. And finally, to uh, wrap it up, uh, the, to get the ecology of the system in order to bring wisdom, harmony, and congruency to our behaviors. So there you have it. Uh, in terms of the, uh, in terms of the, uh, I would say, overcoming those obstacles. Because once you overcome those obstacles, it allows you to be all that much more effective in your uh, leadership. Okay, so uh, I'd like to uh, ask, uh, is there any questions or comments as we come to uh, the end of our, uh, I would say the end of our uh, discussion for this evening? From the leadership perspective, once you are familiar with this uh, obstacles, and you are familiar in overcoming these obstacles in your life, the other added benefit is that when you are dealing with the people around you, with your colleagues, with your peers, with even with your bosses, it becomes almost second nature to you to notice what's stopping people from being effective as leaders as well. And once you notice that, you'll be able to help that person overcome those obstacles by bringing any of these uh, solutions to them. So learning ways to overcome these uh, obstacles uh, benefits you in two ways. One, it benefits you for yourself. The other, as a leader that you are, it will also help the people around you to further develop their powers and become much more effective as leaders in their lives. Okay. Thank you, uh, Manal, uh, for putting that uh, inside there. Uh, actually, I, I mentioned to you at the beginning of this session that um, I've learned about uh, these tools in uh, the APG uh, much, uh, uh, I would say, almost 15 years ago. And I'm beginning to get bet more and more appreciation uh, of what it does. So it, it is basically about empowering ourselves, about healing ourselves, and programming ourselves for greater success, and then creating that uh, ecology. And uh, I only learned about this, uh, what, five days ago, last uh, Saturday, when Michael uh, had that presentation. I said, wow, this is another fresh approach uh, to uh, APG. So yes, it is something new for me as well. <laughs> and I'm glad I'm, I have, have this opportunity to share this with you. So before we end, we come to this point whereby I would like to hear what is your takeaway from this? I would like to invite each and every one of you uh, uh, to share uh, uh, with, if you are willing and ready to share, what is your Take away from this session. Uh, I'd like to. Uh, so today I'll, I'll start at the very top of my screen. Usually I start at the bottom. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to start off with uh, Gim Kim. Uh, may I know what's your uh, one or two takeaways from this session? Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. You are still muted. Okay. What, what I found okay, was the way you gave very clear personal examples uh, from your own life or from your own surroundings in relation to some of the um, matters which we are uh, handling. For example, you shared about how you turn on and off, you know, the, the states for you to accommodate your grandchildren. And, and, and I, I, 
I found what you shared so authentic, and I am inspired to um, be that authentic in the way I deal with other people. And I found generally the information which I've got today to be extremely helpful for me to even be a better person and to to empower myself and therefore knowing that to be able to to lead others around me when the need arises yeah thank you so much for this very um, um, informative uh, session thank you so much thank you Kim Kim uh, uh... Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, all of what you say. Thank you. Right. And uh, I, I, I have at the bottom of my screen there, Veronica, she, she needed to leave. So uh, she put in here, have a single-mindedness to be an effective leader and also to equip yourself with skills needed to accomplish your goals. Uh, so uh, thank you uh, for that, Veronica, for leaving that note before she left. Um, Guat Cheng, so what's your takeaway for today? Thank you, Masuki. I learn, unlearn, and relearn FPG. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, Guat Cheng. And uh, I look forward uh, that you drop in for the APG that I'm running uh, next week because the APG will be in a slightly different arrangement. We are, do we are doing the APG in stages. Uh, when we run it next week. So I look forward to seeing you. <laughs> okay. Right. And uh, Simi, uh, go ahead. May I know what's your takeaway? Hi. Okay. Uh, what I learned is I think the uh, program single-minded and most of the time we tend to multitasking many things and in the end we might not achieve anything and are easily burned out. So... Today, what I learned, the most important thing is, I guess in a simple way is, being present is important. Thank you. Thank you, Simbi. Appreciate that uh, learning from you. And uh, you and go ahead. Yeah, um, my takeaway today is, I, I don't know whether it's a right or wrong or correct way kind of thing, but is that uh, we need we, we, we have to be able to change our state according to the situation to make us resourceful to handle the situation. Yeah. That's right. Because we are, we are living at a fast-paced kind of society now. So right. things keep on changing, the situation keep on changing. So our state of mind also have to keep on changing kind of things. Yeah, yeah. That is my takeaway today. Absolutely. You nail it uh, to be able to be flexible enough to change our states according to the circumstance. Thank you. Uh, Check you. Uh, next, uh, Mike, uh, go ahead. May I know what's your takeaway for today? Oh, was okay. Hi, everyone. Yeah, so as uh, I think you mentioned in the earlier that with this is my first session, I think this is uh, really interesting and I did not really. Uh, expected that it actually can break down into all this, right? So one of the most, uh, how to say that, I could recall that is actually uh, like I, when I, especially at the problems there, that actually like we need to really like uh, focus on the problems and uh, the solution is like we're giving attention and intention on it. Uh. So I think uh, self-focus and uh, especially whenever it comes to problems that is really uh, useful that we need to actually uh, be mindful as well. So, but of course, uh, I would also be very frank that uh, some of the examples are quite, uh, quite um, how do I say, it, it's quite deep. So, uh, it still, it, uh, it, it, it need, needed some time for me to go and uh, to, to jot down and see back. But overall, I think it's uh, really, really great to have uh, this session. So, yeah. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate that. Uh, and uh, Manal, go ahead. Um, actually, my takeaways are a lot. Um, the main uh, takeaway, it's about the different stages. Um, my takeaway about the different stages that um, we cannot skip a, a stage. So if, for example, a person um, is having a problem with things that we mentioned, like in stage one, 
Um, and we try to work with them about patterns of, for example, a stage three, it will not work because, for example, they don't have the permission to self-lead themselves. They don't have the permission to, 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 to think. And so if I go for the intentionality or go to, okay, uh, so well, the mind to the muscle, it, they will not, it will not actually work. They will not make the decision even to, to move. So it's about the stages. This is a one uh, takeaway. Another uh, takeaway, it's I got a better understanding of each pattern and what does it do and when you use it. You, the three examples, it made it far more clear for me, um, especially when you mentioned first the problems and then you, you gave it, okay, this is the problem and you gave an example of, and then you gave the solution. Then I came to understand, aha, so now I know I can, if whether I'm dealing with this problem or I'm facing this or I'm having a client that is facing this, then I can run this pattern and it would work. Um, and I got by far more motivated that to use, for example, the uh, um, uh, um, the focus uh, laser um, 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 focus laser um, pattern of, uh, to use it into when I'm like um, into the coaching session itself. Mm. Um, that would be, um, I believe, more helpful for me, and it will always sustain my um, uh, uh, my focus on my state when I'm do using I'm doing my sessions because at times I go into in a good state and sometimes. I am I'm not in a good state. So this would bring me a stable state that it's something that we turned on and off and it would work for me. So um, actually, thank you. Thank you so much, Marzuki. It really um, made a hell of a difference for me seeing the big picture and understanding. So thank you so much, Marzuki. Thank you very much, Mana. I appreciate uh, all of uh, what you have said just now. Thank you. Yeah. And last but not least, Hashim, uh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, my key takeaway for this evening is when you put up that uh, 15 numbers of you know, uncontrollable mental and emo emotional states. Uh, example, uh, distractions, unfocused in the task, even though uh, like you are doing online learning, then some advertisement comes up, you got distracted. <laughs> uh, it's the world of uh, too much information. And uh, on the other hand, there are too much pressure in unproductive activity mm -hmm. and too little pressure in productive activities. So again, it goes back to the meaning on what uh, we ascribe to that particular activity. So that will give me some sort of uh, uh, the awareness. Uh, those are the mental and emotional states that are uh, holding me back mm -hmm. to to exercise my fullest uh, responsible state. So thank you very much, Mazuki, for that uh, enlightening uh, discussion uh, this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Hashim, for that. And uh, again, I would like to thank each and every one of you for, uh, for being here this evening. I really appreciate and honor your time for being here. Hashim, Manal, Shinyi, uh, Chet Siu, Mike, uh, Gimkin, uh, and watching. Uh, I appreciate all of you for being here. It is an honor and pleasure for me to be able to serve you in this way. Uh, and I hope uh, I'll meet you again uh, in the next sessions. So with that, I would like to wish uh, each and every one of you a uh, good night uh, for Manal. Good afternoon. <laughs> and may God bless all of you. So thank you very much and hope to see you again. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you.